It's The Breakfast and Plus TV Africa, time for What the Press. As always, we take you through the pages of our national dailies and have, I guess, make sense of all of the big stories. Ezekiel Yai Tok, a public affairs analyst, is on standby. It's good to have you join us, Ezekiel Yai Tok. Always a pleasure to be with you. Good morning. Good morning. Okay, so we, we take a look at the Daily Independent newspaper this morning, and I will be looking at the bold story on the Daily Independent. National Assembly re amends Electoral Act Amendment Bill. That's the bold caption. Underneath, there are several riders. Senate approves direct, indirect consensus for party primaries. House of Representatives adopts direct, indirect primaries. These are riders uh, you find underneath the bold caption. Home invasion by military court orders federal government to pay Namdi Khan 1 billion naira. Alleged terrorist uh, Khan reign again and trial continues February 16. Five count charge, watery and baseless. And uh, this is what the uh, defendant is quoted to say, Mike. Confusion as NAS minister differ on removal of fuel subsidy. And so the, the big question is who is in control, who is calling the shots in a country of 200 and almost 11 people, uh, 211 million people, by the way. Security forces killed 1,400 civilians in 14 months in southeast right groups quoted and gunmen enforcing sit-at-home order kill APC youth leader, another in Enugu. National Rise Development Council to save Nigeria Two billion dollar yearly, and that's what the Senate is quoted to say. And Lagos acquires two uh, Tango trains. Bola Ahmed's associates split over Osibanjo's alleged presidential bid. I don't want anyone to create enmity between myself and Tunubu Adeye is quoted on that. Nigeria maintained clean sheets and group stage in style. Talking about that game that happened yesterday. But that's the much we can take on the Daily Independent newspaper this morning. All right, let's go straight to the punch and look at the stories and on the headlines on the front page of the punch newspaper. And of course, the Electoral Act Amendment uh, leads the headlines on the front page of that newspaper. Senate bows to Buhari includes consensus for party primaries. Senate bows to Buhari includes consensus for party primaries. Senate adds consensus to House of Reps direct indirect primaries proposal. Consensus will subvert popular will antithetical to democratic principles CSOs is what they're saying about that. At the top of the paper, the front page, Nigerian passengers face hitches as airlines suspend U.S. flights over 5G rollout. Uh, very interesting, but also worrying times. Nigerian passengers face hitches as airlines suspend U.S. flights over 5G rollout. That story uh, details can be found on page 17 of the punch. Uh, fuel subsidy, NEC considers report today, TUC meets, ASCON threatens showdown. PVCs have not expired, INEC counters Tinubu. An FG to establish 18 modular refineries in all producing states. A picture of the Minister of State for Oil, uh, Timmy Press over there. Cooking gas demand surges over one NLNG's 100% domestic supply. Cooking gas demand surges over NLNG's 100% domestic supply. A bit of a relief coming the way of Nigerians. I'll declare my presidential bid after APC convention. Bello. All right. Um, there's a picture there of uh, the legacy governor, Babajide Sawolu, in Milwaukee, the United States of America, inspecting uh, those trains that are destined uh, for Lagos to be part of the Lagos Metro uh, Red Line. And, of course, the Lagos State government sparing no effort to publicize that. Uh, more headlines. A man who will confess to killing mother with stick, dumping body in bush, remanded. Three of teachers beaten by hard thugs. Parents arrested. Another one. Federal government charges not worth defending. Kanu tells court gets February date. Reps order probe of Malami IG's involvement in Magodo estate dispute that can be found at the bottom of the front page. Another one at the bottom of the front page. A Lagos domestic worker flees with 13.9 
millionaire cash jewelry one week after resumption. Wow. And the returning officer told me 2003 governorship results ready before election. Uh, Oshoba recounting his experience. Those are the headlines on the front page of the Punch newspaper. All right, let's take a look at the leadership newspaper this morning. Ex-generals, governors, regional groups may determine 2023 presidency and more foreign countries to participate in Kaduna Trade Fair. And another bold caption says, Electoral Bill, NAS pushes choice of primaries to parties. APC denies zoning positions, releases timetable for convention. According to the APC, that convention happened the 26th of February. APC Women seeks review of parties' constitution. And you also have federal government bans rice importation through seaports. That's it on the leadership newspaper this morning. And finally, we take a look at the uh, headlines on the front page of the nation. Uh, it leads with this one. Uh, governors tighten grip on APC ahead of convention. Governors tighten grip on APC ahead of convention. And... Uh, it follows with the sub-headline, State Helps Men to Shortlist Two Aspirants for Chair. Zoning Battle Rages and Convention Guidelines out. Details on the front page as well as page four of the Nation newspaper. Still with the 2023 election, Zainak warns parties against conducting primaries outside AKT. Or okay, these is ahead of the governorship elections coming in that state. Another one at the top of the front page. EFCC quizzes Amcon MD over sold assets. Kanu's trial continues February 16. And Tilbu clarifies position on PVC. A bit of a, uh, a diplomatic uh, take on uh, that episode by the Nation newspaper. And those are some of the headlines. At the bottom of the page, we have Reps Probe AGF. IG over Magodo Lagos incident and Eagles take all nine points. Of course, it won't be complete without pictures from uh, Governor Babajide, so all of Lagos State's visit to Milwaukee uh, to sign a contract to buy two plane, two trains uh, for Lagos State. Uh, it's all good. Merci. Very interesting. Indeed. Indeed. But, 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 but let's quickly, you know, have Ezekiel Yai to uh, share his thoughts on some of the uh, big stories on the dailies this morning. Once again, thank you for joining us. Always a pleasure. Okay, so um, let's take a look at which of the stories interest you as we went through the pages of a national dailies. There's a first that does not have a second or a third. After the first, the next one is a fifth, and that has to do with the electoral bill. I, I want to say that Nigerians must learn to have their eyes on the ball. Politicians are extremely good at what they do, which is play politics, not governance. Right now, we know what happened, and I want us to follow this very carefully. There was the clamor by the public for us to have direct transmission of results. The National Assembly rejected outright. There was this terrible public outcry that we wanted it. Then I said, okay, we'll give it to you. But at the dying minute, they smuggled in the issue of direct primaries. It wasn't a coincidence. It wasn't an accident. It was a well thought out plan. Knowing they've got to play the good cop and the bad cop, and they knew the timing. Mr. President, unfortunately for me, was in on the game. So that very contentious issue was thrown in, knowing very well that Mr. President will have that to play with. So Mr. President kept it till the very last day, knowing the, the, the timetable or the schedule of activities of the National Assembly. And when he sent it back, the National Assembly said, oh, we've got to go on recess. So they left it. Now, we in the civil society, we continue to mount pressure, mount pressure, mount pressure, and say, look, we've come to agree. We had a town hall meeting, plus TV Africa was part of it, and the whole media, we had a town hall meeting. I was one of those that spoke at that town hall meeting. And then we said, you know what? Leave out the contentious issue. We've agreed to lose that for today and fight another day. Let's not throw the baby with the bath water. Eventually, they reconvene after they'd spent about how many, seven weeks or thereabout, which they had enough time to talk, 
to discuss, to do whatever they wanted to do. One expected, we even went ahead to do a clean copy where even the typos and every single part that had conflict we resolved, everything gave them a clean copy. What we expected was it takes just a day to go through, amend, and then send back. But guess what has happened? They have very, very consciously, deliberately, intentionally produced two versions, which was absolutely unnecessary in the first instance. Because they had meeting, I can tell you that, even up to the previous night. They couldn't have been staying without Malami, the AGF, the Mr. President, the Senate President, the Speaker of the House, without sitting down over this period. I mean, I would like them to tell Nigerians that they didn't sit down and say, okay, this is what they're going to do. And what I see is another game. So as soon as they arrived, they now passed two different bills. Follow the progress. So there's going to be that of setting up a committee to reconcile and come with a position, okay, which is absolutely unnecessary. Now we're going to go on that discussion. They're going to take us on that journey. And time is going to go. And at the end of the day, they are going to come at a resolution and time is going. Every single step of the way makes Nigerians to lose confidence by their own calculation. But we Nigerians, and people, have, some papers have said that the National Assembly bows to Mr. President, and that's a wrong narrative. They are all on the same page. They are bowing to public outcry, not to Mr. President. Because if Mr. President was on the page of the public, he would have told them what to do. He tells us we'll jump and they say how high. So if Mr. President did not tell them what to do, it means he's in on the game. And if he had told them what to do, they would just go to the floor of the house. You know how they pass certain bills like that. You know how they even stay back to pass budget. We know how they play this game. So when they start to say, oh, I think it's X, the other one I think is Y, okay, we're trying to reconcile, we're trying to come together, it's a lie. So my own advice to the public today is one, one expression eyes on the ball you see that electoral amendment electoral transmission of results at all we are going to have it it's going to be done whatever it takes we're going to do everything within the laws peacefully to ensure that maximum pressure is brought on the national assembly on the presidency on the governor's forum on everybody to make sure that they bow to the will of the people is been established without any ambiguity that the people want direct transmission of results from the polling booth. Leave every other thing, we'll face that some other time. Interesting. Um, uh, your, your take uh, and, of course, um, analysis of, of, of the motives of this, these politicians. But, um, uh, well, for now, it's still there. That clause is still there. Um, particularly the uh, electronic transmission of results. Um, but, but now we see a move or a shift in position from uh, the, uh, the clause for direct primaries as an, a requirement for election of um, party candidates to um, a softer approach, which is a direct uh, or liberal approach for the parties to choose what they want to do, which is direct, indirect primaries. And the Senate adding uh, consensus candidates. Um, Ms. Senya, I took your take on this, this inclusion of consensus it's, candidates. It's part of the game. It's all part of the delay process. Simply, you know, we all know that there are only three options available to the party. There are only three. Direct, indirect consensus. It's only three. Simply say that the party shall adopt any method that they find appropriate. Simple. Or you just leave it out completely. It's a given. You don't need to state it. Mr. President, you take it back now and Mr. President says, no, we don't like consensus. I don't think, after keeping it for, first they are going to use another two weeks to debate it. After the two weeks, they send it to Mr. President. He gives it for another 30 days. On the last day, 
He now says, no, 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 we don't want this issue of consensus. Just take it out. I had told you to take it out. Just take it out. That's all I want. And then they bring it back to the National Assembly. And they say, no, President, we're not going to accept this. This is becoming too much. You are being authoritarian. They, they, you know, good cop, bad cop. They do like they're so angry. They're so upset. But it's a lie. They're not. It's a game. And then part of that legislation says that money should be released to INEC not less than a year and then they'll tell oh suddenly it's less than a year we're going to have to have that part expunged again so take it back it again okay. it, it, these guys cannot stand the concept of direct transmission of results from the polling booth they can't that's just the issue here so so, so, all so this game that you are playing We've yeah. got to be like the sons of Issachar that can discern, discern the signs of the times. So, Mr. Yachuk, yeah, you're saying, you're saying that... Wake up. Yeah, so this is a bit like what happened, I think, in 2015 or, or so, where, oh, yes. yeah, as I said, okay, the time is too short to implement, you know, a card and all that, around. so let's... We no, but, but, but yesterday, um, when we had, we spoke with the uh, Commissioner for uh, Information and Voter Education, Festus Okoye, we had him on the show yesterday, and some of these concerns were raised. He said whether or not as much as um, we're still hoping that the bill would be amended and of course it would be passed, uh, so we can actually have th that particular clause, the direct transmission of result, which is, you know, uh, top on that electoral um, act amendment. No, no, no. Uh, he, no, he, no. he said that the internal mechanisms of the of INEC itself can allow them can allow the government go ahead to release funds. Uh, he said that there were laws, you know, internal um, laws and legislation that can go ahead uh, to allow funds to be released and allow them uh, the use of the beavers and what have you. He's 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 being. I want to use a nice word. He's being extremely diplomatic, walking the thin line. If a law is passed today that INEC should be funded one year to election, and we lose one year by one day, it's a default on the law. And on account of that, somebody can take that to the court. But we don't want that. Don't tell me about internal mechanism. Just sign this law. Let everybody know what is on the table. Put it out there, sign this thing, let's move on. Why are you scared? What's scaring you? What are you afraid of? What are you, what, what's your concern? Mr. President said, take it off. We say, take it off. Take it off, we've agreed. Just give us direct transmission of results from the polling booth. If the parties want to use, you, we can't get everything right first time. I, I was in the, the whole of Nigerian Bar Association the Nigerian uh, Union of Journalists, the, the Nigerian Labour Congress, these are the three main arms of the, uh, you know, of the People's uh, Assembly. And then the rest of us that represented several constituents, we all came in for two hours. It was live on virtually all the stations. And we arrived at a consensus. Take off the contentious issue. Let Mr. President sign it. After 2023, we would have put it, Jega uh, gave us very good reasons, and I agree with you, on why some of these things should not be there for now. We will now start to make sure that INEC makes it mandatory for all parties to have party registers based on which you cannot have direct primaries. So let's win step one. We now go to step two, and then we'll go to step three. For now, please, National Assembly, take off that contentious issue. Give that bill to Mr. President. Let him sign it. There are too many good things for us to be speculating and gesticulating and going around all these things that are absolute distractions. Okay, uh, uh, Mr. Yatuk, uh, for, for, well, for now, the bill will be uh, including, if, if, it, if the both houses um, in the conference committee agree on, on this issue of consensus, because that was not in um, the one passed by the House of Reps, but it was included in the one passed by the Senate. Um, and the president signs it will be having on paper in black and white 
that parties can elect consensus or select consensus um, uh, candidates. Some civil society organizations, in their immediate rea reaction to this, said this uh, will subvert the will of the people and is antithetical to uh, democratic principles. Um, what do you say to this? Let me tell you, let me tell you, let me tell you, that's a lie. That's not the position of any civil societies. I know why I'm saying that. You know, there are different types of civil societies. There's a part that the government uses to, to push their narrative. Civil societies said, and I say it very, very, I want you to quote me verbatim. They said, take off that aspect and give it to Mr. President to sign. They are trying to give us a new narrative to start to talk about and distract. It's a game. We've seen through it. There's no civil society saying anything. We are, we are saying, take it off. Take it off. Take it off. You know the mass singers? Take it off. Give it to Mr. President. Let him sign it. Now you go and harmonize and say, okay, let us add consensus. You send it to Mr. President. And he said, you guys, you're just wasting my time. I had told you, take this thing off. I'm not going to sign it. Okay. Nigerians are going to side with Mr. President because he said so. Okay, Ezekiel Yaitok, uh, for the want of time and, and the fact that we need to look at all the issues, let's quickly uh, check out the leadership newspaper. Now, there are some school of thought that are saying that ex-generals, governors, and regional groups may determine the 2023 presidency. We'd like to share your thoughts on that. Also, uh, also um, you also have some people saying that we should tax, Nigerians should tax on capacity, character, and stakeholders of these power brokers. For those who are coming to declare their intention and saying, hey, I want to become president, I want to become governor, and what have you. Some other school of thought are saying we should be looking at their character, their capacity to perform. What are your thoughts on this? Thank you. You know, I, I had a discussion with, um, with a senator that actually gave me what I may call sleep. It, it, it annoyed me in a very, very, very uncontrollable manner, almost. And that discussion, he said something very simple. Look, architect, the entrenched interest is so much that they are not going to let go. Forget this issue of third force and things like that. The entrenched system will not let go. And we're running narratives without thinking of the implication, the prognosis of such a statement. What they are telling you is that in this country, as at today, what you want, what you think, what you wish is absolutely irrelevant. What is important is their entrenched interest. The prognosis again of this is that we are all, all so dumb, so stupid. We, we, we don't have the capacity to think. We don't have a mind of our own. We are like robots. We are like puppets pulled by the strings by these people, 200 million extremely cerebral people. You see, there's a difference between education and literacy. Even in the village, go and see the way the people do things. They are educated. They are, they are, they, they, they are thoughtful. That they may not go then to read and write does not mean that they are not educated. They may not be literate. Nigerians can think. You have some of the most cerebral people inside the villages because they do very unique things. What am I trying to say? The time has come when you and I must stop running their narrative. We must stop saying the things they want us to say. We must, how can you tell me that 2023 is going to be decided by generals, by governors, by pressure interest groups? I, you know what the subtle message that is sending is telling you guys Forget it. Don't even waste your time. Leave this thing from the beginning. Uh, but is that not our reality? As much as that doesn't sound no, very interesting, no, has that listen, not? Listen. No, no, no. There Ezekiel Yaito. No, but has there that not a been a reality over time? Has that not been the issue? I wish you can just hear me this. Okay. There is a difference between our reality and our challenge. Our reality is that we're poor. Our challenge is that we cannot stay down and be poor. We can do something about it. 
I can't sit down here and tell you about my reality and sit down and talk about the, the problems of Nigeria. Oh, there's poverty, there's no power, there's this, there's that. You whine, that's our reality. But for goodness sake, leadership is about our challenges. Our challenges is that democracy is something that's owned by the people and that you and I that are enlightened should step up and tell the people. I go around the villages, I talk to the people and their, their mouth drops and like, what? I tell them, a governor is your boy. A governor is your servant. A governor is your person. And I tell them, this 2,000 naira that you collect, be willing to use it for the next four years. And they're like, wow, can that be changed? I say, yes. When Mr. President signs this bill, your vote will count. He said, will he sign it? That's what everybody's asking. Let Mr. President sign it. All of us in the civil side, we go back to our villages. This is not a television or radio thing. No, it's about every, today I'm going to run. Yesterday, not on yesterday, on Tuesday, I went to three local governments in Oron Nation. I went to the villages, and that's what I do every day. I'm a professional. I'm not a government person. I am somebody who is passionate about this country. And what all of us need to stand up and seize our space. Look, the politician does not pay the school fees of the people in my area. I do. He does not feed them. I do. And yet, on election day, he takes the, 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 the center stage, and I take the back seat. I mean, it's, it's sick, it's, it's sickening, it's unacceptable. You there, my sister, mercy. You know the pressure that is put on you by the people around you, by your sisters, by your uncles, by your relations. You know how many school fees you are paying. Everybody, you know what they're doing. Kofi, you, you are the same thing. The pressure is put on you. And when election comes, you just sit back and allow one man, one local guy in your village, who is a political ebomonkoku, you know, he takes and he decides the direction and puts more pressure on you on a daily basis. We've got to say no. We've got to stand up. All we the elites, we need to wake up. We need to stand up. We need to seize our space. We take care of those people, so we're going to determine which direction they go. Our reality and our challenge must come to a point when we decide whether we want to keep mourning about Nigeria being the poorest country in the world, or we look at the other side, at the office of the citizen, and talk to these people and bring them. Nigerians are enlightened. They just want to be given the right information, and they will go in the right way. All right. Uh, before we move on um, to other things, uh, I just want to go back to the uh, uh, final story from the front page of the leadership newspaper. Uh, Messi, you touched on this while going through them. And uh, the All Progressives Congress uh, convention has been a very, very contentious issue. Even the PDP, after they conducted a convention, um, were not magnanimous in victory, but through one at the APC, challenging them to, to, to try to organize a successful convention. Well, yesterday on the front pages, we saw that uh, the APC, we heard, we're told, that they had zoned the chairmanship position to the North Central. Um, right now, today, on the front page of the leadership newspaper, we are seeing uh, Buni, or this headline, APC denies uh, zoning positions, releases timetable uh, for convention. Um, what's your take on this issue of zoning of the parties or the chairmanship position of the leading parties, um, namely the APC and the PDP, as it affects the outcome of their party uh, uh, primary? to elect the presidential candidate? You see, <laughs> let me say this. I'll say on a lighter note, but it's like using a small voice to say something serious. The problem of APC is still in the gym. It's still doing press-up. It's still building muscle. The world will never start. What is on ground for APC, you understand me? I came here at the beginning of 2019 after Mr. President took the second term, you know, started the second term. I said APC, have strategic thinkers. APC, Mr. President is not going to be on your ballot in 2023. Start to move the narrative into issues, into persons that you'll be able to project and continue. Up till today, APC is still running on Mr. President, Mr. President, and it's starting to dawn on them that if this man goes back to Daura to face his 150 cows, do you understand me? They're going to have a problem, and it's already busting on all seams. The camps are already split, and politics is a game of numbers. Now, when 
to go to the convention. Whosoever has, you know, their blocks, whoever has the structure of the party, the other arm um, is not going to want to agree. They're going to be disenfranchised. And what happened to uh, PDP is going to happen to them. A couple of governors, stakeholders, take for instance today, you say, Mr. Tinubu, you can't have the ticket. Or Mr. Tinubu sees that his camp has lost out in the primaries. And the primary says the structure, but now that they've said you can have direct or indirect or even consensus, whichever team hijacks the, 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 the convention, their candidate is going to win. Imagine a situation where Tinubu's team loses out. What thing is going to happen? He's going to sit down there and clap for them? No, and he's a major principality in the power party. Others are going to say, guy, come, let's work together. These guys have worked against you. You got, and it's going to happen. I'm not. A, my name is Ezekiel, but I'm not exactly a prophet because this is not even prophecy. It's just what you don't need to be. It is no rocket science, as it's normally said. So APC has problems on their hands. Uh, the issue is this: if you say you send the governor, the presidency to the south, what if another party brings a very strong candidate from the north? What's going to be the sentiment like? So they are, they are torn. They are trying to move Nigerians to say, "Don't worry, it must go this way." But they are not. They are not even. They are not even in tune. Because if they were, they would have taken a certain decision, worked on the sentiment of the public, zoned into the southeast in particular. But if you look at all their equation, the people involved, southwest, okay? You have uh, uh, my, my, my Oga Tinubu, you have my Oga Shibanjo. These are the two big names that they are parading. One or two will be picked up with time. All southwest. They have not in the equation brought in somebody from the southeast. Seriously. So that sentiment of let it come to the south, we in the south, south and south, south uh, southeast, we're asking. Southwest has had eight years as governor, uh, as president, eight years as vice president. South South has had six years as governor, and then a little bit of it as vice president. You know, as president and vice president. Southeast has had none at all. So if it's coming to the south, they should it go to. So their concept of sentiment is not well packaged, and then their concept of numbers. That is what they are trying to see. If sentiment has failed, can we go back to numbers? That's why you have someone like Yaya Bello, you know, coming up and strong. And let me tell you that at the end of the convention, what's going to happen is that we have a PC that is so disorganized in so much disarray that anybody that picks up the third force and brings in the breakaway from APC and the breakaway from PDP, you know, and gets it, it acts right in terms of policies and programs and things that will get the people talking about the character of the persons, which is where the civil society is going with respect to personality. We want to know your character, your capacity, your capability, the courage that we have. That's what we want to know. So we, we are going to start driving the narrative amongst, along the lines of personality because money you know, you just said something that, oh, uh, Mr. Tinubu has so much structure, so much structure. Structure to win. But what we want is structure to govern, structure to preside over the country. That is the next narrative. You know, structure of to win election. That's politics. We want structure for good governance, capacity. Do you have the character? Do you have the capacity? Do you have the capability? Do you have the courage at a time like this? How informed are you? How fit are you? So, so because they're going to have to work 25 yeah. hours as a president. Mr. Yatuk, so it means you, you um, on behalf of civil society, are agreeing with um, what the leadership has in front page. Basically, you are agreeing with the ex generals, you are agreeing with the, reg the governors, you are agreeing with the regional groups who are set to be determining the 2023 presidency. And we'll add the civil society there that, um, you know, aspirants must be chosen on capacity, uh, character, uh, rather than where they come from. Um, but, but some people have, have a problem with, uh, with, with the civil society. You know, that is all huff, 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 and puff, no action, really. It's all about talk, talk, talk. But at the end of the day, it's we don't see any impact from civil society. You see, what has been is not necessarily what will be. A time comes, is a pressure, an, an expression I love to bring out. What has been is not always necessarily what will be. 
That is why a day came when the youth of this country shocked us with the ENSARS movement. It shows the potentials that we have. So all it needs is for men and women of conscience, or women and men of conscience, to stand up and fill in the gap. The time is Ms. right. Mr. Yertuk, Mr. Yertuk, when, yes. when they sort to interrupt you, sir, but when the young people came out on the streets and, and to the nation to a standstill, like you said, where were the, the, the suicide groups that we know? Where were they? That the young people were left on the streets on their own. The, the voices we know, the people who come out to the front when suicide issues are, are, are talked about, those who have the major donor funding, where were they? And till today, you, till today, you, we, ha we, ha we have a process that has said, you know, um, you know, people were killed and the government has rejected that and statements have been made by government rejecting all that. And civil society has not basically done nothing about it. And we're talking about, you know, fighting an election to, to bring out people of good character in Nigeria by the same civil society organizations, Mr. Aitok? It's a good question. Amazing question. But Nigeria is a country that evolves. Sometimes it's almost a country of anticlimax. That's why I'm one of those in the school of thought that Nigeria is a client nation for God. One day, no, PDP thought that they would be in power for 60 years. They thought it could never happen. But one day, a group of people just came one, two together, boom, they hit a narrative. It resonated with the people, and what happened, a sitting president was removed. If that could be done, it can be replicated. If it has happened before, it can happen again. So I like the fact that he said, we're, we're there. But I also like what I'm seeing, the meetings we are attending, the results that we are getting, the pressure is being brought back. I know how this issue of direct transmission of results came back to the table in this country. It was thrown out. We said, no, it's not going to be thrown out. We know how we got brought back. This is phase one. We also have phase two. Let the candidates come out. And what we are telling parties is be careful. Be careful because we are going to, it is person, not party. That is the campaign that we are launching. Person, not party. The hashtag we train. Because at the end of the day, don't tell me because you are the ruling party, you're going to bring everybody, or you are the second big party, you're going to throw anybody of us, and Nigerians don't have a choice. They've got to go to either APC or PDP. I'm telling you that they will be in for a rude shock. Let them just bring up the candidates. There is a phase three. That phase three will be unveiled when the candidates come up. But the ground swelling has begun. Nigeria will have a coach that can take us out of poverty. Just like we're looking for a coach that will okay. take us to the World uh, Cup. Now we, can, yeah, I we are looking for a coach we, for Nigeria. We have to call it a wrap here now. Thank you so much for being part of the conversation. Uh, always a fantastic time speaking with you and having you share your thoughts on some of those national issues. We do appreciate and we look forward to having more of you on the show. Thank you, thank you. It's been such a privilege. All right. Quite saddening that uh, talking about this thing with police brutality and the fact that rights group have reported 14,000 civilians have been killed by security forces. And uh, even despite the hashtag enters protests, police brutality continues. And I recently remembered the experience I had first hand seeing a police shooter gone at Lekki. I can't recover from that shock in any where, time. Where are the civil society groups we're talking about? <laughs> where are they? I we're mean, it's, evolving it, it, and we're definitely... It, it, it goes beyond having meetings in hotels and drinking tea. <laughs> I always say <laughs> I that. Think we need to move away now. <laughs> All right, let's tell you what happened today in history. And when we return, we'll be heading straight to our very first major conversation right here on The Breakfast. Please stay tuned.